can wild animals show us its male reproduction receptors? Male reproduction is declining. There is a decrease in sperm count and an increase in testicular cancer. There is also an increase in genital abnormalities in baby boys. Here in front of you, we see products that surround us and our children in our everyday life. It's canned food that can contain bisphenol A. It's lotion that can contain parabens. It's a t-shirt with a plastic print that can contain phthalates. And it's curtains that can contain flame retardant. All products known to affect our reproduction. One way of addressing this problem is to have a look at the wild, to have a look at the mink. The mink resemble a lot like us. They are at the top of the food chain where the chemicals are accumulating. They also expose to the same chemical cocktail as we are as the chemical leaks out in their environment. If you want to address, if you want to know more about how the chemical cocktail affects the reproduction, it's a good idea to have a closer look at the testes, at the mink testes. It's another good thing about the mink is that they are everywhere found in the nature that they easily caught in traps. But there is a problem when using wild animals for research. The, the mink, they are caught in traps or shot by hunters in the forest, far away from the lab, where we could have a closer look at the cells in the mink testes. So how does this long transfer time affect the cells and our results? To find out more, we set up a study where we use normal healthy mink and we put them in different groups with different times between the animals were killed until we could have a closer look at the cells, in, cells from the mink testes in the microscope. So one of the groups where we looked at the cells immediately after the animals were killed. One of the groups we had a prolonged transfer time for six hours. One group, 18 hours, 30 hours, and 42 hours. One way of dealing with this long transfer time is for the hunters to freeze the animal and then send them into the lab. So you, 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 the long transfer time, the animal is frozen and the results wouldn't get bad. Um, so we do also use one group where we freeze that meat and then thaw them. And after that, had a look at the cells to see how this freezing affected the cells. What we found out was that some measures, they were robust and constant. They did not change, even though the transfer time were prolonged up to 42 hours. While some measures, they were much less robust and they changed already after six hours. And what's even more interesting is that they changed in a way that could be misjudged as toxic damage. And this idea about freezing the mink, that was, if you want to have a closer look at the cells in the testes, that was not a good idea. Because when you freeze, uh, you, when you freeze the animals and then store them, all the cells, all the details are destroyed, so you can't see anything. So to answer the question, if we can use wild animals like a mink to show us if male reproduction is the case, I would say yes, it's a good idea. It's a good idea to use the mink and to have a closer look at the mink testes. But you need to have control of your methods. You need to know what you're looking at. You need to know which measures in the mink testes that are robust and doesn't change and which measures that do things so they could be misjudged. And you have to put that in relation to how long transfer time you have. And um, so when, so you don't misjudge your results. And when you have your sample, think that you sit there, you have the microscope, you have your sample from your wild wing, and you look at yourself and you see, okay, this doesn't look right. 
then you need to know if this is due to toxic damage or if it's just due to how you handle the link until the cells are under your microscope. Thank you.